Right, my humblest apologies, in this video the term Polaroid is sometimes used to refer to the sheets of film that are used. Polaroid is a brand name, and the sheets should of course be called a polarizer or an analyzer, depending on the context of its usage. Don't use the word Polaroid in an assessment. Here we go then. Can you see me? Hopefully you can see me through that film. That film there is a Polaroid filter. Now, it's got loads and loads of vertical lines on it that are very, 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 very close together. Um, and you can't see them, right? Obviously you can see it, it's got a kind of grey colour to it, but you can see through it. It is transparent. And I have another sheet here, which is also transparent. But, if I put the two of them together, yes, you can still see through them, but I'm going to turn one of them. Watch this. Oh, where have you going? That's a bit odd. Turn it back. What's that all about? Let's see if we can explain it. Polaroid filter. Polaroid filter. When you put one in, light still gets through it. When you put another in, it depends on the orientation of that second filter. Sometimes the second filter is called an analyzer. And if you rotate it through 90 degrees, it completely blocks the light. Keep going, and it gradually comes back and lets the light through again. Keep rotating, blocks the light. Keep rotating, lets the light back again. Polarizer analyzer. Let's have a wee look at that then. This will be better showing you this with a sheet of white paper, right? Here is one piece of Polaroid film. If I rotate that, then it doesn't make any difference. You can see that wee happy red face all the time. Yeah? Let's keep it there. Now, if I bring in a second Polaroid filter, here it's here. Now, at the moment, then, you can see right through it. See that wee happy red face? But if I rotate the second one, when I rotate it 90 degrees, the light gradually that's passing through the filters, that light decreases to zero. And then it comes back again if we rotate, keep rotating it through 90 degrees. So as we rotate 360 degrees, let's say that's our zero position. As I rotate it gradually, the light that's transmitted through decreases to zero, then it gradually comes back again, and then if I keep rotating, that's me at 180 degrees, if I keep going, 180 degrees, keep going, it then disappears again, no light transmitted, and it comes back again at 360. So as we rotate, the first film is called the polarizer, the second film is called the analyzer. As we rotate that analyzer, then the light is going through maximum transmission, zero transmission, maximum trans transmission again. Hmm. Right, electromagnetic waves, as their name suggests, they have an electric field component and a magnetic field component. And these two components are vectors and they are always perpendicular to each other. Usually you'll see an electromagnetic wave drawn like that kind of diagram there with your electric field vector shown as a blue sine wave and your magnetic field vector shown as a red sine wave. Now most light sources, for example sunlight, are unpolarised and what that means is the vectors are emitted in random planes which is usually shown like the wee diagram I've got in the bottom right hand corner there. Now if you imagine that the light wave vectors are two-dimensional sine waves, then those sine waves can have any orientation that you like. And when we're studying polarization of light, we only consider the electric field vector. So an unpolarized light, the electric field vector, that two-dimensional sine wave is emitted or transmitted in random planes. The unpolarized light can be forced to have a single transmission axis. It can be forced to have a single plane in which the electric field vector travels. And you do that by passing your unpolarized light through a material called a 
polarizer. It's a filter that has got lots of very thin, closely packed parallel lines on it, which only allows the light to be transmitted in a single plane on a single transmission axis. So after passing through the polarizer, this light is said to be plane polarized. Now a second filter, which is identical to the first, it can be used as an analyzer. Now that means it can be rotated to allow the plane polarized light through or it can be blocked, completely blocked. So the transmission of the polarized light depends on the orientation of the analyzer. And when your transmission axis of the polarizer and the analyzer are perpendicular, no light gets through the analyzer. Now, as the analyzer is rotated, the transmitted light has an intensity that follows a cos squared curve. Now, this is called Malice Law, which isn't actually in the course, but as you can see from the graph, the intensity of the transmitted light is a maximum when the transmission axis of the polarizer and the analyzer are orientated the same way, then that intensity falls to zero when the analyzer is slowly rotated to 90 degrees. If you keep rotating the analyzer, then the intensity of the transmitted light increases again to a maximum when you're at 180 degrees when the transmission axis of the polarizer and the analyzer are aligned again. And so on and so on, maximum when they're parallel to each other, and zero transmission when the polarizer and analyzer are perpendicular to each other. Now remember, it's a gradual change as the analyzer is slowly rotated from a maximum to zero and back to a maximum again. Now, there's another interesting way in which you can produce plain polarized light from unpolarized light, and that is called polarization by reflection. Let's show you this wee demo. Now we're doing a wee polarization demonstration here. We've got a tray of water. A tray has got a centimeter of water in it. And a light bulb, and that light bulb is reflecting off the surface of the water, and you should be able to see the reflection of the light bulb in the water. Now, I have a Polaroid filter here. Now there it is. If I refocus that, I've got it set at 90 degrees just now. Why? Right? 90 degrees is pointing straight up the way. I'm going to rotate this Polaroid filter. Let's get the reflection back into focus again. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Watch the reflection. Ready? Rotating, 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 and oh, what do you see? The reflection has disappeared, and that reflection disappears when I have rotated that Polaroid filter through 90 degrees. I'm now at zero, zero pointing up the way. If I rotate it back the way again, back to 90 degrees. 70, 80, 90. Then the reflection has come back. I'll just show you that. So, rotating. So, disappears. If I keep rotating, the reflection comes back again. Keep rotating. Every time I rotate through 90 degrees, it's fading away, the glare disappears, and then rotate through another 90 degrees, the glare comes back again. <whistles> There's it without the filter. Well, same thing again, there's my Polaroid filter. If I put it right over the lens of the camera, and then as I rotate that Polaroid filter through 90 degrees, the glare disappears, reappears again as I move through. So that's me, one eighty. That's me at ninety. And that's me back to zero again. Let's zoom in on the coin. See what's happening here. So that's the reflection of the light in the water. 
I've now got my Polaroid filter in front of it and I'm rotating it. So keep rotating, keep rotating, keep rotating. And the reflection completely disappears. Depending on the orientation of my Polaroid filter, then the glare of the surface of the water completely disappears. That's it. Polaroid filter. That's what's in your Polaroid sunglasses or the Polaroid filter that you put over the front of your very expensive camera. A kind of cheaper version of that would just be this square sheet of Polaroid film. If I rotate it 90 degrees, choo, the glare disappears. Rotate it back, glare comes back. Disappears, comes back. Disappears, comes back. When light hits the surface of the water, then it is plain polarised. So unpolarised light hits the surface of the water. When it reflects from the water, the light is polarised in one plane. And depending on how I turn my analyzer, then I can either let that polarised light through or I can block it. Better with that one. So that's the polarised light being blocked. That's it getting through. Locked. Now that 100% plain polarised light only happens at one angle and that angle is called the Brewster Angle, discovered by a Scottish scientist. Let's do a wee bit of maths and we'll figure that out. Now if you're following the actual PowerPoint here, there are some hyperlinks where you can see some videos of polarisation in action with Polaroid sunglasses. What Polaroid sunglasses do is they reduce the glare from reflected sunlight from the surface of water. And this is because when the sunlight, which is unpolarised, when it hits the surface of the water, it becomes plain polarised. And the sunglasses act like an analyzer to the polarised reflected light and they will block any reflected glare. Now, unpolarised light can be plain polarised by reflection from any flat transparent electrical insulating material, for example glass, water, perspex, and the degree of polarisation depends on the incident angle and the refractive index of the material. Now there's only one specific angle, one specific angle of incidence when the reflected light is 100% plain polarised, and that incident angle is called the Brewster angle, discovered by a Scottish scientist Sir David Brewster in the 1800s. And what he discovered was that the reflected light is 100% plain polarised when the angle between the reflected ray and the refracted ray is 90 degrees. Let's have a look at that in more detail. Right, we've got a little simulation here from those lovely people at FET at the University of Colorado and I can shine a beam of light from air into water in this case. And I can shine that in at whatever angle I like. And we can see the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction, and the angle of reflection from the surface of the water as well. Now I can change the angle of incidence to whatever I like, but there will only be one angle of incidence that results in an angle of 90 degrees between the refracted ray and the reflected ray. And there it is. It's when the angle of incidence is 53.1. So there's my angle of incidence in air. Remember, we're going into water. Refractive index of 1.33. So let's put a normal on here and let's look at these two angles. So the reflected ray is the same as the incident ray because of the law of reflection, 53.1. The refracted ray is 36.9 and the two of them added together is 90 degrees and the angle between the two rays is 90 degrees. So the whole of that right hand side there adds up to 180. So if we do the 180 minus the 90 degrees between the two rays minus the angle of incidence that should be equal to a refracted ray. So 90 minus I 
equals the refracted ray. Now, if we go back to our higher physics, Schnell's law, remember the sine of the angle in air over the sine of the angle in glass equals the refractive index. Well, in this case, n equals sine i over sine 90 minus i. Now, from your maths knowledge, you should know that the sine of 90 minus i is equal to cos i. So, therefore, that gives us sine i over cos i. And sine i over cos i is equal to tan i. So, n equals tan i. And that relationship's on your relationship sheet. n equals tan i, where n is the refractive index of the water. And i is the Brewster angle. It's the incident angle for which 100% of the reflected light is plane polarised. So let's go back to the slides. And there is the same derivation that takes us to the relationship at the bottom of the slide. N equals tan IP, where IP is the polarising or the Brewster angle. And N is the refractive index of the material that the light is going into. Remember that I is the angle then that results in the reflected light being 100% plane polarised. At any angle different to that, the reflected light will still be partially polarised, but at the Brewster angle, 100% plane polarised. Here's a wee worked example then. It says calculate the angle for incidence for light hitting the surface of water so that the reflected light is 100% plane polarised and the refractive index of water 1.33, that's from the data sheet. In other words, we have to calculate the Brewster angle for water. So there's our relationship. N equals tan I. It's I we are looking for. So shift tan 1.33 gives you an answer of 53 degrees. And that's why your lifeguard on the beach with his Polaroid sunglasses sits up on a big chair. It's not just to get a good view is to optimise the chance that the reflected glare is plain polarised so that his Polaroid sunglasses can block that glare. That's just one application then of polarisation. 3D glasses at the cinema is another application, but that's another story. That's for another day. See you in the next one.